resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. What a wonderful gift we have in the Apostles' Creed. You hear me say it over and over again, but if you are trying to figure out how to tell someone what you believe, there you go. Right? I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the resurrection of the dead. Amen, amen. Can you hear me all right? All right. I feel a little quiet when I walk away from there. Maybe that's good. Um, so... <laughs> Well, not long after college, I was working at Riverside Bible Camp, and my dad met me one morning, I think it was a Saturday morning earlier than I was ready to get up, and he would brought the trailer uh, so that we could use it, my boss and I, to go pick up a horse somewhere. And so he called me to let me know he was about to pull in, and I rolled out of bed, and I changed my clothes, and I threw my hair in a ponytail, literally, maybe brushed my teeth, I'm not sure. And I met him at the ranch, and he pulled up and gave me a hug as he normally does and said, man, you look great today. And I thought, really? <laughs> I've done absolutely nothing, like nothing. You look great today. Now, isn't that the Father's love? Isn't that a beautiful image of the Father's love? I love um, watching Weston and our little gal because they have this cuddle deal. If Weston's on the couch, often playing on his laptop or working on his laptop or doing something, if she comes up to him, he sets his computer aside and they have a little cuddle time. It's the most beautiful thing. The Father's love, right there. It's all over. Now, <clears throat> I know that this isn't everybody's experience. I know that some people have had fathers who have um, said mean things or, oh dear, hurt them in some way, maybe over and over again. Maybe they haven't been the model that they had hoped for in a father or a dad. Man, that's real life, and I'm sorry. But as we talk about the Lord's Prayer, we're going to break it down, and today we're just going to talk about those first couple lines. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be his name. That's all we got today. That's all we're talking about. And there's actually four pretty clear differentiating points in there. Our Father, right? Father is a familial word. It draws us all together as one family, as one body. All right, is this too much? Is this rattling too distracting? All right, we're going to keep on for a little bit. The Father and he holds us together in one body, right? So my dad and my mom and my two brothers and I, you know, that's, I think of that as a family. And then I think of Weston and I and our kids. That's a family. But then we've got the Father in heaven and all of his children. And here we have Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, telling us how to pray. He doesn't say my Father. He says, pray in this way, our Father. Together, our, that's huge, right? That brings us into a family and father. Oh, it's a supposed to be, meant to be, a beautiful, good, wonderful place to be in heaven. So that sets apart our father from any earthly father, from any sin, any pain, any damage, any struggle that fathers on earth might bring. Our Father in heaven. He is the one that's set apart, that lives and reigns in heaven. What a beautiful gift. Now, Scripture tells us um, that we have been adopted into sonship as children so that we can cry, Abba, Father, which is basically saying, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. Now, that sounds pretty uncomfortable for many of us, right? Because he's our Lord, he's our Savior, he's our King of Kings. And he's also our Daddy. The only one we can snuggle up to. The one that says you're beautiful when you've done absolutely nothing to yourself. The one who cares for your needs. Wakes you up in time to get ready for school. The one who helps you get ready in the morning and sends you off. Our Daddy. But this one, this one's the one that, that walks before us, that cares for us, that introduces us to Jesus Christ who sends his son to die for our sins, to rescue us. Jesus Christ, that father. All right, 
I'm moving. What a beautiful gift to have a Father in heaven set aside for us. He has created the world and everything in it, and yet he wants to be our daddy because he's walking before us. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've prayed when I moved to a new community that the Lord would bless me, that the Lord would prepare friends ahead of me, that the Lord would prepare the way. Before I came to this church, I just prayed that the Lord would prepare the way, the transition, that it would be smooth. Before I moved off to college, I prayed that the Lord would offer friends in that area for me. Man, God does that. He prepares the way. Now that's just one simple example of all the ways that God prepares the way for us to come to him. Sometimes it's in salvation. Sometimes it's in difficult seasons where we need to return to Christ. And he shows up and he prepares the way so that there's a place for us to come back to. Where he can hold us in his arms, our daddy, our father, our our God. And he's in heaven, he's, he's in heaven ruling and reigning. He created the world and he's recreating and he brings healing and he listens to our prayers. Our Father, who has an ear for us and a voice to speak to us. Man, he's good. So, hallowed be his name. Holy is his name. Now, I looked up this, these verses in several different Bibles, just to see what different translations said, because we're pretty stuck to the prayer that we know that's written in our hymnals that now we also have posted on our banners. Isn't that beautiful? Our Father who art in heaven. NLT says, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your name be kept holy. And the message, um, which is a... Uh, a paraphrase, if you will, is our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Reveal who you are. Uh, The King James Version, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, The New King James, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Um, So it's all very, very much the same, right? But holy is your name, hallowed be your name, Is something we can do as proclaiming that God is holy here on earth and sharing with others and living a life that reveals that God is holy and good and righteous. And it's also God being holy, holy, holy. As the hosts of angels, this means like thousands of thousands of angels are singing a chorus. This is holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty in heaven and earth right? He is glorious. May your name be holy. So we pray. So the way that Jesus has invited us to begin our prayers is to remember who we're connected to. He first invites us to remember that our God is Father, that we are a body, and that God is holy. Before we begin to ask for anything, before we begin to tell him of our problems and our concerns and ask for him to speak, we remember who he is, as holy, as good, as righteous, as perfect, as the Redeemer. We remember him as our Father, as a familial unit that holds us together. We remember who he is, and we proclaim it without shyness, without trepidation, without fear, that God is holy. Holy are you. Reveal who you are. Like we're continually seeking God to reveal himself as we continue to trust that he is good. This isn't new. Most of you know all this already. But sometimes we need to remember. Sometimes we need to be reminded who God is, why he is good, and that we can trust him. So Jesus says, pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your name be kept holy. May we remember who you are. 
Man, I love the story of the prodigal son. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? The, the kid runs away. He asks for his whole inheritance from his father. And he takes it, and he squanders it, and he, he just lives this wild life. He doesn't even consider how much anything costs. He just spends it however he wants for the joy of the moment, right? For the, I should say, enjoyment of the moment, the excitement of the moment, because it's not deep, satisfying joy. And it's gone. And he ends up living with the pigs, doing chores, and living in this ugh, yucky place. And he's like, even the servants of my father have a better life. Even they do. And so he walks home with his head hung low, ashamed, feeling guilty, wondering if maybe he could just be a servant to his dad. But what does his dad do? He hikes up his robe. He runs after him. He's been watching for his son to return. And as he watches out the window or out the door as he sits on the porch, I don't know, he sees him miles off before he can probably barely make out his face, but only the, the profile of him, and he runs to him, hiking up his robe, which is not okay in that time. It's just distasteful in every way. But he doesn't care because he loves his son, and he's so happy for his son to return. This is the Father's love. So I don't know where you are today. I don't know if you feel so close to God right now because he is your bosom buddy, and man, he has just seen you through so much. Or maybe you have wandered away. On the outside, it looks like you're still close, but your heart and your mind are far away. I don't know. But remember, the Father's love is great, and he wants you to be right with him. He longs for your companionship. He longs to know that you are saved in his arms. And his son, Jesus Christ, he sent for you. He sent for you so that you could be rescued, you could be redeemed, you could be restored. Our God is holy. He is perfect. No decision that he makes is wrong. Hmm. Have you thought about that? No decision that God makes is wrong because he's holy, he's perfect, he's true, he's righteous, he's king, but he's also our daddy. Hard to wrap your mind around. But will you run into his arms today? Will you allow him to scoop you up and rescue you and snuggle you into a big bear hug? Will you kneel at his feet and say, God, I'm sorry I wandered. I'm home. I want to be home. And I need you for that. Our Father, our Father, He's my Father, He's your Father, He's your Father. Isn't that cool? And that church in Africa, He's their Father. And that church in Indonesia, He's their Father. And that church in Ukraine, He's their Father. We're all one family. That's one mighty good Father. Will you keep his name holy? Will you remember how good he is? Not just because of what he's done for you, but because in his nature, he is perfect. And will you trust him? Today we have the opportunity to celebrate Holy Communion. Oh, it's one of my favorite Sundays because we get to remember what Christ has done for us. There's a nourishment that happens through this sacrament as the Holy Spirit pours through the elements of bread and juice, wine, whatever a church uses, we use juice, right? The Lord just pours through that. And there's restoring, there's strengthening. And God says, come to me over and over and over again. Communion is one of the sacraments that we get to repeat over and over and over again to be fueled by his goodness. Will you trust in him?